Hi, welcome back to my channel. So this is another review video, only it's not per se over a book. I just recently watched the latest chapter for Firehearts um, called Do You Have a Magpie in Your Home? So I literally just finished watching it. And before I get into that, I just want to say that I really enjoy the pre-show that came out just before this video did. Um, I, I really enjoy the humor in it. Um, I find you very fun to watch. Um, so I'm glad those will keep on going. In terms of the commentary that was missed in the last video over a priority of an orange tree, um, I have not read that one yet. <laughs> And watching your videos and commentary about it, I haven't can't say I had any interest in reading it. Um, I've seen other videos with positive reviews, so now I'm thinking about it. So eventually, I may give that a go, and then I'll understand those commentaries. But until then, that's kind of how that is. Um, but uh, so on to Fireheart. So. You know, now that we've gotten into the third one, things are getting a little bit more, getting deeper, I guess, if you will. And, you know, as his, or as A.G. McDonald has pointed out, that in this um, story, there isn't really a good person or a bad person. Everyone has um, many different sh shades in them, ranging from light to dark. And I think this was a good way to show all those different gray areas and the different people in in within the story so far and although while i agree that lots of mistakes were made from hera from overreacting you know in some cases she was justified for fighting back you know at first you know at first i was a little annoyed at um the mom just because i think that is one of the biggest issues when it comes to parenting and it's not easy frustration and emotions run very high when your child does something or talks back or gets into trouble and you know the instant thing is you know what have you done what were you thinking but um i think once you get past that it's important that you listen to what the situation is and i don't know that a lot of people do um you know just speaking from my experiences growing up you know if i when i confided in a parent about something that i had done or didn't want to do or a situation that i was going through despite the commentary you know you get told you can always talk to me you know my door is always open yeah at times even i find that a trap growing up for me that was a trap yeah, I confided in you, but because I confided in you, um, looking for those thoughts and opinions and someone to help me figure out the issue or the situation I was in, there was always a consequence. So I confided in you, but as a consequence, I got grounded or the rules changed or some kind of consequence would come into play because I opened up to my parent. So I don't know. You know, in the beginning or toward the end of the chapter two, you know, she tried to confide in her mom. And before she got remotely close to getting all the story out, the mom jumped on her instantly before she could finish the story and instantly gets all up into her face about how, you know, it doesn't matter what the situation is. She shouldn't have been beating up on the mayor's daughter and blah, 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 blah. Well, the mayor's daughter is just a person, too. And, you know this next chapter chapter three you know it indicates that there's a lot of corruption underneath the surface of everything and that's true anywhere i mean it doesn't really matter where you go there's corruption everywhere um you know this reminds me a lot of the sci-fi series that i watch you know killjoy for example everything seems hunky-dory but there's a lot of corruption um going on beneath the surface and a lot of people suffer because of it and, you know, the higher up, the more power you think you have. But really, really do you have that much more power than anybody else. You just make it seem like you're bigger than anybody else. And really, you amount to the same as anybody else. You can't take it with you when you die. So as far as I'm concerned, you're all equal in that way. But, you know, getting on to the episode, um, I like the... I. I don't necessarily like the situation, but I like how the story is getting deeper now. And 
you know, now she's become an orphan and I don't know, I'm left with a lot of different feelings about it. I mean, I c commend the mom for in the end, she did try to stand up for her daughter when in the end she tried to just sweep it on the rug and make everything good again, but the damage has been done and, uh, you know, it actually makes me wonder what could be going on behind the closed doors with the mayor and her daughter because most bullies you know while it's not always the case some of them are just mean to be mean but a lot of bullies from the stories and things that i've read and from past history there's always something going under the surface whether it's because they're under a lot of pressure from their parent to be perfect or to take on the same responsibility of say, a family business or to you know whatever the issue is and sometimes it's abuse um you know sometimes it comes down to um the fact that you know if, for example a father wanted a son and end up with a daughter so you can end up with negative situations there or in reverse you know there's no one way to go about it and a lot of the time there is something going on under the surface with the bully and the bully ends up finding an outlet and not in the healthiest way the outlet ends up becoming bullying other people and the people around them to try and make themselves look better and to lift themselves up and unfortunately this ended up falling on Hera so while I feel sorry for Hera and the situation that's surrounding this whole thing at the same time, I also wonder what's going on in the service. You know, we've seen the small glimpse now of the mayor. So having that for a parent makes you wonder just what goes on behind closed doors between mother and daughter there. You know, I, not everything is as it seems just because Hera has all the money and everything else. It comes across like the mother's buying her daughter off because she can't be bothered to spend time with her. So... You know, there's a lot of different things that could be going on that we just don't know yet. So, did I want the mom to die? No. <laughs> Not what I'm saying at all. It's just, I think there's a lot more going on here. Um, just like any, you know, corrupt leader, there's a reason why they became the way they are. Very few villains, if you will, are villains for the sake of being villains. There's always almost always a lead up to it. There's something that happened that made them become the way that it is. And sometimes that's the key to surviving it, is figuring that out. So, I don't know. There's definitely a lot to this story, and it's there is no black... It's definitely not black and white. There are so many different shades of gray. Um, I do feel sorry for Hera in the sense that, you know, now she is an orphan, but is she? You know, it's indicated that the dad is missing, not dead, missing. The mother has taken it on that her dad or the husband is, is dead and buried, but, you know, you never know. It's possible that the dad actually is alive. So I'm uh, definitely curious to see how this story unfolds. It's kind of hard to give too much in-depth opinion on a chapter like this because it's kind of like that in-between phase, you know, where it's not so much there's just there's a lot of action in this particular one and not a whole lot of story per se so i think i'll have a little bit more to give once i see what chapter four is so between chapter two and four and then seeing three in the middle it'll all make a little bit more sense in terms of where everything is going and where everything is leading so um that is kind of my thought at the moment so but I do um think that everyone did a really good job the actors did a really good job I think A.G. McDonald has done a terrific job in putting this all together and I'm actually kind of glad that in the pre-show it was asked you know about why certain characters were kind of faded out a bit more than others um I was curious about that but I wasn't going to ask because I figured it had something to do with technical stuff and I know nothing about it so I'm glad that question was asked and it makes perfect sense doing these kinds of things are not exactly cheap especially if you're funding it yourself so I commend you for doing that um but yeah so that those are kind of my thoughts and opinions so far um when the next one comes out I will watch it and sort of do 
another one based on how everything flows and see what goes on from there. So, okay, so thank you again so much for watching my channel. If you're new to my channel um, and you like this video, please be sure to like it and share and subscribe. If you are a repeating um, subscriber or a, a consistent follower, thank you so much for watching my video. I greatly appreciate the support and I will see you again in the next video.